Hello and congratulations on your assignment to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. I'm Chris Tyree, one of your 88th Air Base Wing safety team members. The intent of this briefing is to provide you with essential misapproduction information about the local area. When you approach our gates, slow down. The speed limit is 15 miles per hour. If you're inbound, be prepared to stop for our entry controllers to check your ID card. Watch for traffic signals, traffic lights, pedestrians, and bollards. What's a bollard, you might ask? Well, they're depicted in this photograph with the red arrows. Bollards are movable traffic control devices that the security forces use to regulate traffic flow. They are best avoided. Speed limit at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base is 25 miles per hour unless otherwise posted. Child occupant restraints have the following requirements in the state of Ohio. Children less than four years old or less than 40 pounds must use a child safety seat. Children four to eight years old and shorter than four feet nine inches tall must use a booster seat. Children ages eight and above and taller than four feet nine inches must wear a safety belt, just like the grown-ups do. All occupants must be properly restrained all the time. While driving at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, if you use a cell phone, it must be of the hands-free variety. If you're using a handheld cell phone while driving at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, you can be subject to a loss of driving privileges for up to 30 days. Focus on driving. In school zones or child development center zones, even a hands-free device is prohibited. Use of a cell phone, handheld or hands-free, by a vehicle operator in those areas is prohibited. Texting has no place behind the steering wheel. All vehicle operators are prohibited from reading, writing, or sending texts. Additionally, drivers under the age of 18 are prohibited from using cell phones, iPads, laptops, or any other electronic devices. If your windshield wipers are activated due to weather in the state of Ohio, you must have your headlights on. This not only helps you to see, but it helps you to be seen. The state of Ohio also has a move over law. The move over law means simply that you're required to move over or slow down when approaching an emergency vehicle with their lights activated. If you're on a highway with more than one lane, you must move to the lane farthest from the stopped emergency vehicle if possible. If that is not possible, then you need to slow down to the speed that is most practical for the situation. On Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, you're going to notice some alert route signs. If you see vehicles with flashing lights, yield to them. That's pretty good advice for any time that you see a vehicle with flashing lights on Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Do not challenge them, stay out of their way, and leave them to their important business. When you are entering or approaching a crosswalk, do so with some deliberation and focus. Never leave a place of safety to enter a traffic environment unless it is safe to do so. In the state of Ohio, Pedestrians are prohibited from entering a traffic environment in such proximity to an oncoming vehicle so as to induce a hazard. Vehicle operators, of course, must also be very cognizant and situationally aware of the potential presence of pedestrians at any time. It is important that pedestrians and motorists work together to make sure that we don't have any traffic mishaps here at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. If you're running or jogging at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, to the extent possible, utilize running tracks. They are intended for that purpose and they eliminate any traffic considerations. If you do run on the roadways, you must run facing the traffic. You need to wear reflective gear at night or periods of reduced visibility and you must remember that if you are in a traffic environment, the use of any sort of earphones is prohibited. If you're riding a bicycle at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, there are some requirements for you to attend to. 
Bicycle helmets are mandatory and must be endorsed by the Consumer Product Safety Commission, ANSI, or Snell Memorial Foundation. Wear a highly visible outer garment during the day and an outer garment containing retro-reflective material at night. Bicycles must be equipped with a white front light, not a reflector, visible for 500 feet, and a red rear reflector or light clearly visible from the rear of the bicycle from a distance of 300 feet. Use of portable headphones, earphones, cellular phones, iPods, or other listening and entertainment devices in a traffic environment is prohibited. Ride with the traffic and obey traffic laws. Remember that a bicycle is a vehicle. Persons riding bicycles upon a roadway must ride in single file except on paths or parts of roadways set aside for the exclusive use of bicycles. Motorcycle operators also have requirements that must be met. Head protection must consist of a helmet that meets federal motorcycle vehicle safety standard requirements. Eye protection must be ANSI approved. Goggles, wraparound glasses, or a helmet with a full face shield. Foot protection must be of the sturdy, over-the-ankle variety. Sandals, low quarters, or sneakers are prohibited. Motorcyclists also need to wear the appropriate protective clothing. Long sleeve shirt or jacket and long trousers. Full fingered gloves or mittens made from leather or other abrasion resistant material. Motorcycle jackets and pants constructed of abrasion resistant materials such as leather or Kevlar are strongly encouraged. Riders are encouraged to select personal protective equipment that incorporates fluorescent colors and retroreflective materials. This is an example of an Air Force member doing everything right with regards to personal protective equipment. There are safety re training requirements for motorcyclists also. Those can vary depending upon the type of motorcycle that you are riding and your experience. This training is required for all individuals operating a two-wheeled vehicle that has an engine displacement of 50 cc's or greater. Contact your unit motorcycle safety representative to ensure you meet and document training requirements. Winter in the Ohio Valley can be fierce. It is very important that you take your preparation for travel very seriously. Before you travel, clear all of your windows, all of your lights, all of your turn signals to make sure that your intent can be made clear and that you are visually conspicuous. Check the weather. Know what weather you expect to travel in as you go to and from your destination. Check your battery, belts, all mechanical systems to ensure that your vehicle is capable of responding to your driver inputs as the manufacturer intended. Have an emergency kit available. Have a travel plan and communicate that travel plan with others. Someone should know where you are going and when you expect to return. The Wright Patterson area is crisscrossed with major highways. They are subject to extremely high traffic volume and roadway construction is commonly encountered. The state of Ohio also has approximately 800,000 white-tailed deer. These deer can weigh up to 300 pounds and run at speeds up to 45 miles per hour. They're social animals, so if you see one, there are likely others present. They're most active early and late in the day, but if disturbed, may present themselves to you at any given time. Keep in mind, if you're here during the winter, that overpasses and bridges will freeze much more rapidly than the roadways that are actually in contact with the earth because of the airflow underneath them, causing them to reach the ambient air temperature very much more rapidly than the surrounding roadway surfaces. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact us. We look forward to hearing from you, and we will do our best to make sure that you have the information readily available that you seek to make sure that your stay here at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base is mishap-free. This concludes my briefing. Thank you for your time and attention.